Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of The Mist. A very good episode with a lot of things that went down, so let's, you know, get started and start breaking everything down. For one, Adrian's character in this episode. Like, you thought he went over the edge last episode. What's scary in this episode is just how calm, cool, and collected, how, how casually he says, well, the fact of the matter is I can get inside the mall without there being any questions because it's like it'll be okay like if you want to ask anything i'm like i'm on my own my parents are dead like he said it so nonchalantly or whatever and it's 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 so interesting compared to last episode where he's just crying about his mom but now you know obviously hating his dad but it's like it seems like now he doesn't really care and the fact of the matter is what makes it even more like disgusting is the fact is that he so candidly is like actually sitting down and is rehearsing what he's going to say to Alex and Eve just to get their approval it's like that but we're family Kevin sacrificed himself for me just faking up tears it's like you are the filthiest you're you're such a scumbag and that was just like that just shows you that like there's no more pretenses of him just like feigning it. He, he I guess he doesn't have to fake it in front of other people when he's by himself or whatever. I mean even when he was around Mia and Jonah, it just he seemed so callous, you know? And so that was just so interesting seeing that and then seeing him meet with them and just like, oh Kevin, he sacrificed himself and telling that to Alex and Eve and they're crushed by and he's just like, It's okay, I'm here for you now. But then later on, I'm going to go, obviously I'm going to be skipping around, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. Like, it's, you see that look in his face when he saw Jay and Alex together. We already know, like, he did this because of their connection and everything. Because there was something there. It's like, no, 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 no. She's not going to be, uh, she's not going to be some, with someone like Jay. She's going to be with me. You know, because in his deluded mind, it's like, when it's all said and done, we've been best friends for so long. She's going to love me. It's like, wh you know, how is she going to react when she finds out the truth about you? That is the question. But I think for him, it's like, as long as she never finds out, it's okay. You know? But I'm I'm interested to see because obviously like doing this episode we have everyone coming together at the very end. Like I said, I'm skipping around, so I do apologize. But everyone's coming together in this, and it's like we have Connor and Natalie there, uh, which I'll get to their situation soon enough. And now you have like the, you know this situation of so Connor's trying to kill Jay. I'm sure. Uh, it, the moment Adrian gets a chance, he's going to try and kill Jay. So, and Eve, if she gets the opportunity, she's going to try and kill Jay. There's literally three people that want him dead, and it, it just sucks. Uh, that kind of ties into a conversation about Eve and Jay. I want to really quickly bring up the fact that it matters. She's actually feeding him, which even he's like, why are you feeding me? Wouldn't it be better just to let me die? But I guess in Eve's mind, it's like, no matter what he did, yes, she wants to punish him, but to go as far as, like, kill, like, you know, in her eyes, probably letting him die would be the same thing as murdering him. Yes, she wants to threaten him and everything, but I don't think she has it within her to actually do it. I mean, considering the circumstances, I don't know. Like, you know, maybe she's completely against murder, but I mean, considering what what provoked her to be in this position in the first place is the assault on Alex, then it's like, I don't know. It's really hard to say. Like, maybe there is some truth to the fact is of what she would do. We see... Uh, what Kevin would do and that's kind of a big thing about Kevin Kevin in this episode is diving into the fact is like he's seeing all those different people the cop from the first episode he sees his brother he sees the guy that he ended up killing and obviously he ended up confronting himself and it's a conversation that Vic ended up having with him too being like what what went back there he's like a reminder and I think it was like basically the mist reminding him everything he did to get to where he is like all the sacrifices all the kind of bad stuff he did to get to where he is like basically the mist made him kind of confront himself you know it's like not even I thought what was going to happen is that moment he started beating on himself I'm like oh man the mist is going to reveal that it's actually Vic you're beating the crap out of with his own bat or something like that it's like oh no I actually thought it was kind of interesting because when the mist had earlier popped up and it like him and Vic were running from house to house and they were running and there was a guy in the mist and you saw something like on his shoulder I thought it was a bat and immediately I was like oh is that supposed to represent like Gus or something doing something later on with the bat which I guess technically you could say he did because he ended up whacking well he ended up I think he ended up jabbing Eve with or hitting her with it, whatever the case may be. But I thought it was going to be something like that. Turns out not to be the case. It was Kevin himself from when he was bashing that dude's head and uh, the crazy guy who was talking about the evil spirit that he had let loose. So. But this was an episode where things just like continued to spiral out of control. And I thought that was so interesting how... Like, obviously, everyone's like, no, 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 Eve's got to die. And even uh, the security guard, Kyle's like, yeah, she's evil. And even Gus trying to be like, well, you, whoa, should we really go as far as saying evil? It's like, well, she killed Shelly, so yeah, I think so. And it's like, she did, you did see her do it, right? So, yeah. And it's like, and also the question came up about what do you do about Eve, too? And it's like, there's so many levels to it because it's like, 
Because Eve kind of sees through him later on. It's like, oh, you said it was Alex because you the one who did. Because he just happens to be the only witness. So, you know, deduction would, like, you know, the reasoning is, like, obviously he's the only one that, quote, unquote, witnessed the crime. And he's saying Alex did. So it's like he's covering it up. But everyone's so heated and so mad they're not willing to see it. Except for that dude, Wes. He kind of pointed it out to the lady being like, huh, don't you think it's weird? Why would Alex kill Shelly? And it's like... Everyone would say, like, oh, it's because Shelly figured her out and everything, but would, would that really be the right thing to do to kill her? Would that, I mean, that would automatically put her at the top of the suspect list anyway. That's why Gus went for her, because they already established, like, there's bad blood between Shelly and Alex, and, you know, Shelly was starting all that stuff up about Alex, so there's that, so... I, was, I wasn't expecting, uh, kind of really quickly, about the whole thing with Jay. I wasn't expecting that reveal like to be like that. That like Eve would have to reveal where Jay is, that she has been holding him this entire time. Because everyone's like, oh, we haven't seen Jay for a while. Did Alex kill him too? It's like, so to ease everyone's mind and get her even less off the suspect list, Eve has to reveal where he is. And then even Alex is like, why? And Eve kind of looks away sh ashamed. Because there was an interesting conversation between her and uh, Jay earlier in the episode. I, I kind of like uh, left out too. It's the fact is that he's like, yeah, you're up here thinking I'm guilty or whatever. It's like, she's like, oh, you're no different from your dad doing whatever you want to. Kind of getting away with whatever you want to. It's like, yeah, you say that, but you're wrong about something. My dad actually thinks I did it too. And you see this look in Eve's face almost like, oh. Like, almost like, oh, that, that sucks. But at the same time, it's like, no, I don't feel pity for you. Because I think on some level, Eve is kind of starting to believe him too. But I think her, her emotions and her hate, and the fact is that Alex and Adrian both said it was him. I think it's just like, in her mind, it's like, no, 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 no. You're trying to get close to my daughter. You know, you're just trying to manipulate us and everything. It's like, you're trying to play the sympathy card. It's like, I have no pity for you. The fact that it matter is what you did to my daughter. So... I mean, it's one of those situations where, like, obviously brought it up uh, constantly, the fact is, of what the mist kind of represents. It kind of brings out the ugly side in people. And so maybe that's kind of playing into something within Eve, because Eve's own situation of kind of being considered, like, a quote-unquote whore, you know? And so she, that's why she's always been very overprotective when it comes to Alex. I mean, that's still a situation we still haven't dived into either, like, who is her biological dad, so... That is a question there. I'm wondering will that kind of really come up or not. Maybe not. I mean, it might play some role in something going forward, but it's like, that's such a deep, dark secret. And maybe that along, along with everything is why, you know, she's so protective because it's like, we know that like prior to Kevin, she never really knew what it meant to be happy. She never really knew herself. Like, you know, once again, like everyone around town, they're like, oh, that's, oh, that's, that's Eve, you know, kind of like whisper and talking shit behind her back type of thing so i don't know if that would like how much that i mean like obviously as a mom you would want things to be a little bit better for your daughter you wouldn't want your daughter to kind of be treated the way you were so obviously that's why she was overprotective but it's like to what ex to what extent the does um the other factors in the whole equation of like oh not knowing who well Kevin not being a biological father, like, how much of that influences that situation or not, so. But we also have to cover what went down with uh, Natalie's group, because the last two survivors from the church are like, yeah, like, it, even there, you could see immediately they're starting to have reservations. Obviously, the guy's like, yeah, he's freaked out because he's like, can we start talking about rats and stuff like that? Um... And the wife is having reluctancy in believing in Natalie. Are, are you sure we're doing the right thing? And she's like... You know, like, this is no time to be questioning, you know, her will, you know, that's, she personifies the mist as a her. And, um, uh, the things that transpire completely caught me off guard. I, like, you know, like, I, the moment things transpired and the guy fell and her, his wife was like, hey, we gotta go back for my husband, we gotta help him up. It's like, nope, we gotta leave him. Because for... Natalie, she's got this whole mentality of like, oh, this is part of the circle of life, essentially, the circle, the cycle of life and death. It's got this endless, beautiful thing, and it's just like, you know, like, it's as the series is going on, she's just gotten crazier and crazier, and just her belief in this whole thing, and like that she is on the right path, that she is doing, she is one with nature, and is kind of, you know, it's messenger and everything, and it's so fascinating to see where she was at the beginning to see where she is now she was a very kind lady in the beginning but we slowly see that deteriorating and like i brought up like you know the mist brings out the worst in people it personifies something it amplifies is the word i meant to use 
Well, personifies as well as amplifies what's already there when it's in someone's heart. It tries to push those darkest aspects of you, I guess those dark corners of yourself, you kind of push to the side. You're trying to push them to the surface, you know, and I feel like it's done that with everyone, you know, so... I mean, I think so far the only person that's never really had their dark sides, like, tapped into so far is, I would say, Alex. I mean, just because of whatever this situation is, she's kind of untouched. I mean, once again, like, you know, Natalie's belief that this all has to deal with the fact is that uh, she was raped and everything. So, I don't, you know. And, like, you know, I kind of brought this up last episode. It's going to turn out that, you know, Natalie's completely wrong. And I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to see what that happens. What happens when she realizes everything she said was wrong. And what Connor me will do when he realizes everything is wrong. Because he stabbed that woman and let her fall to fall down with her husband and left him there for the rats to feast. And they're kind of petting a rat and everything. It's like, oh yeah, because basically the whole life and death cycle is like, you left him down there to die, but the rats got something to eat, so the life continues on in some shape, you know. So, but the fact is, what Connor has done to get here, all the sacrifices he's made, and he's kind of like, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I'm on the right path, right? And now it's like, of course you are. You're doing what you're doing what you're supposed to do. This is your job. This is your purpose. And it's like, what's going to happen when Connor? I think ultimately, I hope it doesn't happen. But I get the feeling when it's all said and done, Jay is going to get killed by Connor. Like even when someone tries to be like, no, 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 it isn't like that. He's going to end up killing Jay anyway, just because Natalie's so in his head. Either that or Natalie herself will pull the trigger. I don't know. I think it will be Connor, just for just how effed up that would be. So I think that is ultimately what's going to happen, and then nothing's going to change, and then they're both going to fall apart. Or maybe Natalie knows more to the situation. Maybe she knows, in fact, Connor killing Jay would make things even worse. I don't know. She might have just been manipulating everyone from the beginning. Maybe that's been her role. Like, you know, she was chosen as the messenger to manipulate and push people down the darker paths so that this thing can feed on it and grow stronger. Um, another part of this episode was about Mia and Jonah. It was kind of a beautiful thing of like... Hey, let's pretend we're strangers, you know? It's like, you know, what would we do? Like, we first met or whatever, and I walked up and told you, yeah, I had an ex-boyfriend, he's a drug dealer. What would, what would be something that you would want? What would be the one thing you would want more than anything? And Jonah's like, oh, knowing who he is? It's like, well, none of, you know, Mia kind of responds, none of us do. And it's just kind of this beautiful thing of just kind of like, if we weren't who we are, if everything was normal, if we were outside of this situation, where would we be? And basically, Jonah's like, hey, I'd run away with you. And Mia takes that as an opportunity to be like, hey, I got this money. If when this is all said and done, when we're safe from the situation, let's run away together. And he's like, "Yeah, let's do that." And so it's like, "Hey, you go rest. I'm going to go look for supplies." And he's like, "I'll be fine." The moment he said that, it didn't happen this episode, but the moment he said that, I was like, "One of you is going to die. It's it's just going to be like that." It's I just have that feeling it's going to be something like that. One of them is going to die just to because why? Because it's going to be one of those series where no one walks away happy. I it's definitely one of those series. So. My mind immediately goes to Mia just because Jonas plays some role in this that I feel like hasn't been discovered yet. So they're going to keep him around long enough for that to happen. So I feel like just for character purpose wise, they're just going to take Mia away from because she's currently off by herself because she's in the manager's room sleeping. Um, that's Gus. I would assume that's Gus's office. Uh, so either she's going to stumble across something that Gus doesn't like that she found out and he'll kill her. Like, you know, like he killed her. I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see on that front. But it's like the moment it's one of those situations of like, oh, wow, we're no longer in danger. It's like, don't say that, you know, because now you're <laughs> you're inviting bad stuff to happen. Now you set it up and you jinx yourself, essentially. So I'm curious to see where that goes. But also in this episode, we saw Wes attack Jonah. Like, you could tell immediately that he recognized Jonah because he stopped mid-conversation with the lady about the whole, like, Alex and Shelly situation and just walked over to uh, Jonah and knocked him out. And he also talked about the fact of the matter is that they've been looking for him. So, it does seem like Jonah did run away, uh, like, I, like I figured. But whether where this whole amnesia thing came about, we're still unclear whether that's something he did to himself or is it a byproduct of whatever they were doing. Like... It does seem like Jonah was neck deep in this whole situation, and it seems like obviously Wes and everyone that's military related is definitely uh, neck deep in this. We'll kind of—I'll get to that in a second. But it's like, what role did they play exactly? What are they trying to do? What are they trying to accomplish? It does seem like Jonah is probably like top position or something because it's like you know the 
uh, Dude West kind of salutes him and everything. He's like, oh, the captain's not going to like that. The fact is that you really don't remember anything. So it's like, are we setting that up to be like, oh, Jonah and the captain are good terms. Either they've been best, best friends for a long time. They're related, like, oh, father and son, brother and brother, whatever the case may be, you know. I don't know why I said brother and brother like that. Just I could have just said brothers, <laughs> nevertheless. But what I was bringing up is like um, the situation where Vic and Kevin end up running into uh, that house, and there's dead soldiers, and there's that guy being like, "Yeah, every." He was saying some weird stuff like everything was on fire, and the fact of the matter is like they'll kill us or something. Like basically, it seems like the military was cleaning up. Like it seems like the military is setting this all up to be like. We don't need any witnesses. We'll make this look like an accident. We'll probably like make the place blow up. We'll make you know the town blow up or something. You know, make it look like a gas leak or something that killed people or people just went crazy or something like that. It seems like you know, once again this might be some government experiment of some new weapon or something. But once again, there's the whole angle of Natalie being like this is some kind of like nature thing. So once again, is it like the government trying to weaponize nature or something? Like, is this a weapon or is it something like it is natural? And it's just like they're co like they're testing it. Like, has this popped up in other places before? And the government's just been testing it out. And they've sent soldiers in here to really kind of uh, run diagnostics and see how things are, like how people react, how the mist affects them, and stuff like that. I mean, I guess they're well trained soldiers, so for them, it's kind of like we're not in any danger. I don't know. Like, I'm trying to figure out what role they play in all of this. And what they're trying to accomplish. Are they going to try and wipe out everyone? Why hasn't the military really acted upon anything now? Is it... Because uh, it's something I think I brought up in a, a previous episode. Is like, where does the boundaries of the mist go? Can you even leave the town? Would the mist prevent you from it? Is it mist, like, uh, thicker on the edges of town, like, before you leave? So could the military get in even if they wanted to? Are they actually here and they're just laying low or something? Because they haven't been able to, like, they weren't haven't been in contact with him for a while, so I'm just curious. Like I said, a lot of stuff went down in this episode. Some very interesting developments, and I'm curious to see what goes down in the next episode. Because the next episode is, in fact, the season finale. And with this situation, like I said at the beginning, everyone is together. The, every, the story is closing in. Everyone's together. And I'm curious to see how this will all play out next episode. You still have a lot of the people that go on Gus's side kind of riled up. I'm curious to see what people on Eve's side is going to do. What what Kevin's going to do. Will he be able to get to Alex in time to warn him about Adrian and stop all this craziness before Connor can get to Jay and kill him? I'm betting no. And I bet e even if Kevin does get there, I still think uh, Connor would like kill his son anyway, but I think it might be a situation of him not being able to get there soon enough. I don't know what's going to happen with the whole Jonas situation, what's going to happen to Mia, so many questions. We will just have to wait till the season finale to find out, you know, any answers, so. But really, that's all I want to talk about in this episode. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, look like to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and good.